What should the dimensions be of the lightest? Minimize surface area. Aluminum cylindrical can. Closed on both ends. With a volume of 36 pi cubic inches. This involves optimization. Optimization problems require two equations. The first equation is what we know. We know the volume of the cylindrical can. The volume of a can, whether it's closed on both ends or not, is pi r squared h. It's convenient that there is a pi with the volume. 36 pi equals pi r squared h. The pi's will cancel when we divide by pi r squared. H is equal to, oops, I have two sets of equal marks. I guess it's super equal. Pi's cancel. 36 over r squared. Okay, let me point out something that is uh, kind of a little hitch to it sometimes. Be careful with what variable you solve for. Some are more easy to solve for than others, or easier to solve for than others. Um, if we were to solve for r, we'd have to take a square root, we'd have squared in the denominator, and we've dealt with it before, but we avoid it wherever possible. Solving for h is easier. We now have h by itself. Let's go to what it actually asks. It's asking you to minimize the surface area. So let's use a different formula. The surface area of a cylindrical can is, um, without even looking at the formulas, don't look at the formulas, you know you've already tried. You're trying to get ahead of me here, and that's fine, but let's think through this logically. Don't panic if you don't memorize formulas in life, because honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I don't have them memorized where I can rattle them off. I have to stop and think about them. If I have a cylindrical can, there are two circles on it, top and bottom, because it's closed on both ends. So two pi r squared, and then the length around it, the, the lateral side, the one side it has it wraps around, um, really corresponds to the circumference of the circle, so 2 pi r times the actual height of the cylinder itself. So there we go. Um, we know what the height is. Since we know what the height is, we will plug that height in. So the area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Not a line right over on that side. Imagine that. Okay, let's start simplifying this thing. Now, once we have it simplified, we'll take the derivative. So the area is nothing special here. 2 pi r squared plus 2 times 36. Starting to write it like a fraction. That's what it's going to turn out to be. And there's a pi. And r over r squared cancels out an r. All right, we're going to take a derivative. The derivative of that, 2 pi times 2. Something about this isn't looking right. Let me get, take a second and look at it. Make sure I'm right. I'm good. 4 pi r. Minus, your minus come from, Mr. Reader? I'm taking a derivative. This is 72 pi times the understood negative 1 on that r. If I was to move it to the top, it would be negative 1. So minus 72 pi over r squared. We're going to set that equal to 0 and solve. When we set it equal to 0, we can easily move this term over. We'll wind up with a fraction that can be cross multiplied on two fractions. 4 pi r over 1 equals 72 pi over r squared. Cross multiply those. 4 pi r cubed equals 72 pi. Something magical is about to happen. We'll divide by, by 4 and by pi. R cubed equals 72 divided by 4. I believe that is 18. It is. Now this next part I cannot do in my head. We need to take the cube root of 18. Lucille will tell me. All right, Lucille, what's the cube root of 18? says 2.62. Lucille's never lied. All right. We know the radius. We need to find the 
dimensions. All it says is the dimensions. It does not say to actually find the area. So we're looking for the radius and we're looking for the height. We're going to use this formula to find the height. So the height is equal to 36 over the radius squared. I'm gonna, since that last answer is stored in my calculator, I'm going to just go ahead and do 36 divided by my answer squared. 5.24. Everything in inches, let's see. Pretty sure it is. Come on board. Cooperate with me now, Lossy. Um, inches, there we go. Inches here. Inches here. We're done.